Do you? Good evening, this is Dick Bertel. Gail King, Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Denise DeSenza. I'm Dennis House, thanks for joining us. And this was the scene 25 years ago this weekend, Governor Weicker's State of the State Address. And if you look very carefully, that's Bridgeport Mayor Joe Gannam in the front row. Thinking about a run for governor, that is Nancy Wyman, then a state rep, Kevin Sullivan, <laughs> former state senator. And there's Tom Ritter being sworn in as House Speaker on January 6th, 1993. I apologize for the poor condition of that tape. It has sort of deteriorated over the years. But, and we are joined now by that speaker's son, who's now the majority leader, Matt Ritter. Great and to see you here today. Vincent and Vincent Candelora, Great who's the House Deputy Republican Leader. And uh, as you see, look at that old video. What do you think? <laughs> I think I saw my sister on the side there. I can remember <laughs> being at No Webster Elementary School in Hartford and getting to go to school late. So that was probably the biggest victory for me that day. A lot of familiar faces, yeah, huh? But it's pretty nice to see those. Look a little different. We're all still around. That's a good thing. So uh, let's talk a little bit about, because some people don't understand why we're back in special session tomorrow. Why are we? What's the explanation? Well, um, when we had passed the budget back in the fall, um, in it contained a provision dealing with changes to Medicare savings, our Medicaid savings plan, which is um, sort of supplemental benefits for our senior citizens. And we've heard loud and clear from many of these seniors that it's impacting them much deeper than we had thought it would. So we are going back into session to make the necessary corrections to put that program back in place. Governor Mueller would also like you to handle sort of rebalancing the budget, why not do that now? We'll, we'll get there. I mean, we need to wait for some revenue numbers that are coming in in January to kind of see exactly where we are. But we plan to get meeting on that as soon as next week to start talking about that. But I think the feeling was from our caucuses, I think from all caucuses, all four of them, take care of this, please. They're getting a lot of calls and emails. Once we get that addressed, we'll worry about the larger deficit and see what it actually is. You know, people across Connecticut are just unsatisfied with the way the state is going, and they, they're not happy with the long budget process from last year. What kind of guarantees can you make today that this next legislative session will run more smoothly? Well, I think we, we've seen in the last cycle and where we saw the sort of the logjam break is when Republicans and Democrats in the legislature sat down together and worked on a budget. And that's when we saw everything um, sort of open up and the process was much smoother. Quite frankly, I think it was much more difficult with the governor in the process. Uh, he has very different ideas and, and is sort of inflexible. And so it took us to work together, both parties, uh, to achieve our budget. And we have both sides of the aisle have committed to continue that relationship to try to work together and solve all these issues. Representative Verde, do you agree? Is the governor inflexible? No, I think like all governors, they have the list of priorities they want to see accomplished, and sometimes they don't always work with the legislature. And also remember that some people, as you get to the end of your career, you have a little more flexibility and freedom. You kind of say whatever you want. Some people have to worry about 2019 or November of 2018, so you have different ideas about how to get there. But it's a great time for an election to run for statewide office. And if you are going to be a statewide candidate, and I think both of us are happy not to be, you really have to talk about, A, now what am I going to do with the budget? How am I going to work with the legislature? The legislature is not backup singers. We have a very, very critical role in, a, in, the, in, the, in the state government, and we're going to flex our muscles if we feel we're not being listened to. Are we in a state of permanent fiscal crisis? Well, it's, it's long-term fiscal crisis. You know, I would not say it's When's the end of that term? Well, we're looking at... <laughs> You know, we're looking at significant issues to, through 2024. I think we would all agree we have pension issues that need to be addressed. Um, I would never want to say it's permanent. Uh, I'd like to be a little more hopeful we could address these issues. And, uh, but it certainly is long-term structural issues that need to be addressed in Connecticut. What other top issues you want to hit in 2018? Well, just also, I mean, I think, look, it's going to be a short session. It is going to, so I don't think a lot's going to get done other than the budget and a couple of handful of bills that, that people have talked about. But ultimately, as a state, particularly with the changes in Washington, D.C., we have to start thinking about how do we remain competitive? The property tax that we have in our state are higher. We have a state income tax that no longer can be written off and reduced from the federal income tax. So what kind of revenues are going to, that we need revenue. Let's be very clear about that to some extent. If you look at what we're going back in to do, part of it is because I think we don't have enough revenue in this budget. But it's not revenues that make us more anti, more uncompetitive from neighboring states. And I go back to tolls, for example. Uh, every state has it. We're no less competitive. We have to, I think, the next gubernatorial cycle, really talk about these things. How are you going to make sure Connecticut can pay its bills, pay for its seniors to have their, their Medicare savings program, but at the same time not make Connecticut less competitive? Uh, you'll also have to confirm a chief justice of the state Supreme Court. If it's Andrew McDonald, who's a former lawmaker, would you vote to confirm him? Well, I did not vote for his initial nomination, so 
I think it'd probably be, on a personal level, be difficult for me to confirm him as a Chief Justice. The broader um, question, many people say that perhaps a former lawmaker with a political past should not be in charge of the Supreme Court. Well, I think that? that is part of it, absolutely. And I think part of it was my experience working with him as a lawmaker that concerned me uh, ha having him go on to the court. Um, it is a tough, I think it's a tough transition to go from being a legislator to going on to the Supreme Court. Would the Republicans move to block? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I mean, he did receive Republican support when he went up for his nomination initially. Uh, I think there were a handful of no votes. Uh, I'm not sure there will be a concerted effort to, to block it and or not. And what about you, Representative? Are you, are you concerned that he has a political pass? No, there's, there's many great judges who have gone on from the legislature or from other branches of government uh, to do a great job. I will say that obviously we have a process. These questions can be asked in the Judiciary Committee. That's why we do it. But, but uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice McDonald and everything and all my interactions of reading his decisions uh, is qualified to be the Supreme Court, the next Chief Justice of the Connecticut Supreme Court, and I would imagine he'd have my support. Matt Ritter, Vincent Candelora, we thank you so much for being on the program today. Best of luck with that special session tomorrow. We'll Thanks. see you back on here again. When we come back, we'll talk with Doobie and Kevin about the governor's race. Are you receiving calls or emails from candidates asking for money? Many people are, so we'll ask about that as well in terms of what people want in 2018. And big news here at WFSB, we now have a Face the State YouTube channel. You can watch interviews in their entirety forever, starting right now. Just look for it on my social media pages and I'll tell you how to get there.